welcome back everyone to CWF Sunday Superstars. My name is NintendoGen64 and I'm joined as always by His Eminence, Fraser. How's it going my friend? I'm good mate. How's it going? How yeah. are you? Yeah, I'm good. Did you have a good week, Fraser? I had a good week. I had a great, spectacular week. Oh, well that's... And I am ready for this main event. Well, well, this isn't the main event. This is the opening contest. Uh, the main event tonight, as a, as a result of last week's uh, tag team match, we'll see Johnny Natrium and Al Malloy take on the CWF Tag Team Champions for the CWF Tag Team Championships. Unbelievable matchup for our main event. But but now we've got your your uh, former tag Favorite team Favorite douchebag. Favorite douchebag. Fucking disqualify this bastard. Yes, it's the number one contender for the CWF World Heavyweight Championship. It is your former tag team partner, Pete, the player. The yes. douchebag. Well, well, Fraser, Fraser, you can say that, but Pete successfully defeated three former champions in in Al Malloy, Johnny Natrium, and Sludge Ball to, to earn the number one contendership to Crystal Fisher's title. And uh, at our upcoming pay-per-view extravaganza, CWF presents the bash we're going to see these two square off in a one-on-one -on -one contest for the title your thoughts on that match he's a dirty player he's a dirty player and he knows that he's here to cheat he's here to to he he's here to break people's necks and ruin lives and careers That's well all he's good for yeah i well fraser fraser talking from experience there because as we know uh back in february at the chamber of eliminations event uh, you were dropped on your head onto the steel by uh, by this man, uh, thus ending your in-ring career. Ending my career and ending the amount of money I make. How does that happen? How does someone drop your head and break your neck? He knew what he was doing. He was trying to end my career, and I will get revenge through this match by Pro watching. So, so by proxy of rabbit. So I, I can see that you've you've picked your horse in this race, Fraser. I have. Yes. Well, well. Now we've got you know. Pete the player, one of our rising stars here, going to town. And look at that, did you see what he did there? The neck! He was just damaging the neck of Fraser. It's always... Oh, it's always rabbit, He's a dirty player. He goes for the, the bones that will break the easiest. And that was a wonderful, wonderful bulldog there by Rabbit on Bajaya. Followed up by a, a drop kick there to the neck as well. Maybe Rabbit trying to get some uh, some revenge from you. Have you... You and Rabbit were, were close, weren't you, back, back in the old competition we days? We were close friends. We were close friends, we were good rivals. <laughs> But now he's here to to fight in the name of me. Well, well, that's 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 very very noble of him. And look at this, Pete lifting him up for a Michinoka driver and the pin. Is this it? Is this it? We've got one. We've got two. And Rabbit no, kicks no. out. Damn stray Rabbit, you go, you go. And, and Pete there with the the chop block now going to town on Rabbit's legs, but Rabbit manages to avoid that. And look at this lovely. They call that a tilt the world DDT. See, all he does is he lifts people up and drops and lifts people up and drops and lifts people up and drops and... Can he do anything else? Can he tackle someone to the ground for once? Oh, and then back to work on the neck there, rubbing, rubbing into that? you. He knows you're in commentary too, doesn't he? Doesn't he, Fraser? Oh, yeah, he's fighting in despite of me. Maybe I'm giving him morale. Maybe I'll discourage him. I don't care. I hope the words hurt him. Well, they say sticks and stones may break my bones, but hopefully words will hurt him. And Rabbit there with a picture-perfect... Drop kick. Now, Pete the player and you were part of the tag team Fourth Reich, paying homage to Pete's uh, uh, German heritage, and you can see that he's had a, a new addition to his collection of tattoos. There's a, a flag, a German flag on his back there. Pete is a distasteful person. He has no care for what the Holocaust was, because him and his Fourth Reich, that was his idea, not my idea. He'll, he'll try and slander me, he'll try and discredit me by saying it was my idea to come up with the Fourth Reich. That bastard, he's the one who came up with it, the racist, neo-Nazi scum. That's what he is. Yeah, well, you went along with it. Oh, clothesline, just nearly decapitating Rabbit and goes for the pin. One. Two, no, you don't, Rabbit. You're strong, three. Rabbit. You're strong. No, that is... Pete the Player stronger. wins, and and what a... what you got to say momentum now firmly on the side of Pete the Player as he looks towards his uh, his title match coming up in a few weeks' time at the Bash. Uh, Rabbit couldn't get it done here tonight, Fraser. What, what are your thoughts on that? He cheated. Well, he won fair and square. The close line. He cheated. Well, maybe to, to you he cheated, but I think he's, he's going to be... Uh, one hell of a, a competition for for Crystal Fissure come uh, come the pay per view. 
What do you oh, think? Chris Fisher will win. This is just a. He, he's been given one extra week. That's all he's been given. But he's going to be out of the play next week. So uh, we'll talk then about that. Right. Well, we'll talk then about that. But we'll talk th about this now. Uh, this is a battle royal, a six-man battle royal, uh, to determine number one contendership to the uh, the Intercontinental Championship. We move from one title picture to another. And uh, who's this fine man coming down to the ring? It is. Hi guys. It's Ratchet Five. Ratchet 5, yes. You know, uh, a former Intercontinental Champion himself, uh, also a former Tag Team Champion. And uh, do you remember his Tag Team partner? Uh, no, on top of my head. No, 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 that was uh, Machine King. He and um, Machine King were Tag Team Champions at one point, uh, defeated by the team of uh, Crash Bandits Bar 12 and Rabid Wombat JR, actually, at Crash Mania 3. Uh, back in uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, really, Ratchet 5 has been in a bit of a dry spot for championships, and uh, I think winning this match would uh, obviously put him in the title picture against Owen, and I think he'd like to uh, to quench that thirst he has for championship gold. Much as I respect Ratchet 5, we should be fighting with the Divas by now. The Divas? Yeah. Well... Looking. Almost. I think I think the hormone therapy is uh, is it's taking its toll, but it's, it's going to be slower than expected for him. And uh, and here we go, former Intercontinental Champion as well. It's the, the elephant himself. The big man. He rules the city. It is the city ruler one, Mr. Loads of Money himself. He rules the buffet. Yeah. Well, you know, city ruler one once uh once said that he has uh more money than anyone else in CWF and uh, and can afford those buffets. Buffet rule of one. Yeah, the, the the benefit of having rich parents. I don't know, but recently the crowd has turned in favor of him since uh, since reforming his tag team with uh, Zindictive. The crowd has no fucking idea what they're talking about. They'll support whoever they think is uh, the 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 bunch of bandwagoning. Well, well, <laughs> one one man the crowd hasn't supported since day one is the big man. It's big daddy. BGR, former Intercontinental Champion as well. In fact, Fraser, he was our first Intercontinental Champion. Did you know that? I think I do recall. Yeah, he was awarded awarded the championship back in uh, Crassmania 1 almost three years ago uh, and has not, has not held the title since that night. Uh, he was defeated the very first night uh, by Al Malloy, and uh, since then has been a one-time tag team champion with uh, Lyle, Lyle Bandicoot 93. Uh, he and him held the tag team tri titles for quite a number of months, and uh, and now looking to uh, to go back into singles competition and perhaps regain a title that he was the first holder of. Maybe he'll get it, maybe he won't, but I think uh, I think our friend City Buffet Ruler doesn't stand a chance against this tag team. Whoa, what a man, what a mammoth man, and, and now it's uh, it's time to introduce City Rule One's tag team partner, uh, your favourite, from the Perthites, from Perth, Zindictive. Sticky. Well, Stick Kid, he, he used to be known as Stick Kid, now he's, he, he's gone more serious and he's, he's going by the name of Zindictive. <laughs> Was in Dick. If he changed his name because he knew it was a name for pussies. Oh, hey, well, uh, Stick Kids, Indictive, whatever you want to call him, has uh, has been very successful here in CWF. He's a one-time tag team champion with City Ruler One. Also, a one-time Intercontinental champion. Would he like to extend that reign to two times? Well, I think he would, and uh, winning this match would uh, set that up for him. Remember, Owen. Owen won the title back in. Uh, Chamber of Eliminations back in February, which is 106 days ago, and has not lost the title since then. He's held on to that. He defended it twice at pay-per-view and also on Sunday Superstars. So, Owen, a tough man. So, whoever wins this match, not necessarily guaranteed to come to you. And here comes... Who's this, Fraser? Spiral Jam 86, yeah, we got him, guys, we got him. Now, uh, Spiral Jam 86 never held any championships in CWF. He's, uh, he's completely championshipless. I mean, you've even held the uh, Intercontinental Championship. Well, tell me about what that was like for you, to be Intercontinental. It was glorious, it was good, it was worth it, I deserved it. 
probably the only wrestler in history to deserve this kind of thing, because I worked hard for it. Oh, but like, but, but what about the monetary uh, gain that comes with being champion? Oh, damn straight. It, that was when my career was at its highest. It was before I, well, when I could fight. Yes, I made money. No, I don't, because a certain someone stole that from me. How does how does that make you feel when your career just goes in shambles because someone decides that they're going to break your neck? Well, you know, Fraser. Interesting. Yes. Interestingly enough, this man too has never held the the uh, Intercontinental Championship. Oh, he's going to get it tonight, I think. Well, Mighty Maestro is a very small man. He's often been been written off. And, uh, and you know how that feels, don't you? You know how that feels to be written off because of your height. Call me a man that again and I will fight every single person in this crowd, every single journalist who writes I'm a man that I will fight them in the ring. I don't care about my neck, I will fight them. Well, well, yeah, good luck with that, but the, the doctor said you can never wrestle again. Now, did you, I mean, obviously, obviously, let's talk about this while the match is going on. You you were champion. You were champion when Owen won the title. He won it in the chamber match. The same match that you were forced to retire in. So tell me about that. How did that feel to not even be pinned to lose your title? It sucked. What do you think? You, th you think I'm going to sit there and say, Hey, yeah, I wasn't too bad. I learned from my experiences. I got older. I'm, I'm a big man now. And I can take care of myself. You think I'm that fucking stupid? Of course it sucked. Right, right, but do you still think that you're the, the rightful champion? If you... I am the rightful champion. I only lost because I got an injury, but if I didn't have an injury, I would have gotten my ass back up there and I would have won. And, and would you be champion to this day? I would be champion to this day. Yeah, well, for sure. well, well, we can only speculate on what, what could have been, Fraser, but... but uh... We can only speculate as we watch this wrestling fall to pieces because they've got a bunch of amateurs fighting. Look at this, this is like watching a fucking circus right now. All these fighters, fucking circus animals. If I was in there, if I was in that ring, all those people would be out, all out on their asses as we speak. Oh, speaking of out on their asses, Cinderella 1 just eliminated Zindictive. Only because he's bigger than him. And look at this now. Now, Big Daddy VGR going after Money Maestro, the big man after the small man. What's going to happen? What usually happens in this situation? Yes, Big Daddy VGR See, eliminates. This is money. where I think things are unfair. Fat people should not be fighting the Walter Weight or the Featherweights. Well, well, I mean, we have only one weight division in, in CWF, unfortunately, Fraser. City Ruler could spend less time at the buffet than maybe he'd actually have some agility to himself. Said he has to rely completely on the fact that he's a big guy. Well, well, you know, big guy for you, perhaps. But, but Fraser, like, given we have these four men left, who do you think is going to come out the champion on top? Ratchet Ruler? 5. Ratchet 5? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Is that a match everyone wants to see? Ratchet 5 versus Owen? Is it is, in my opinion. Is that Look, I'm not... I'm, I'm disgusted by City Ruler. I am disgusted. He is a slob. Look at him. He can't even hold himself up properly. Ratchet 5 is going to push that fat fuck out of the ring. See, I told you. Yes, yes. Fucking Ratchet 5 God. eliminating City Ruler 1. It's down to three men now. City Ruler 1 is gone. So we've got Big Daddy VGR, Surprise. Ratchet 5, and Spyro Jam 86. I'm surprised City Ruler didn't cause an earthquake falling out of that ring, the fat bastard. Well, who's bigger, City Ruler 1 or Big Daddy VGR? Oh, he's a big guy for sure, and, uh, you know, I kind of hope it's either Ratchet 5 VGR, those are the ones I have my top two candidates, and uh, by the looks of it, no, no you don't, you bastard, no you don't. Well, they've got him up in the tree of woe there for a moment. Oh, a clothesline! Spyro Jam 86, or Spyro Jam out on his ass. Well, Spyro Jam 86 is turning 30 years old this year. Uh, so, so he's in there with the younger men, so, I mean, Big Daddy VGI is almost completely bald, but believe it or not, he's only 23 years old. You can see that uh, Spyro Jam is getting a bit old and decrepit, and you can see his bones aren't working as good as they used to. Talk about someone who needs a neck break. Well, do you think it's too late for Spyro Jam 86? Do you think his, his best years are behind him? His best years are behind him, and he needs to get out of his ass and stop wrestling. Well, well, I mean, Spyro Jam has had a very successful career, 
you know, working at the delicatessen and, and being a YouTuber. Well, he had the, he had opportunities. He could keep wrestling. I didn't have those opportunities. So he should retire whilst he still can, whilst he still has a little bit of glory to his name. So, so you think he should retire on his own terms, unlike you forced to retire by the means of others? When you're forced to retire, you just leave in shame. You leave knowing that you'll never be able to wrestle again, and it's just part of a, some stupid cycle that you'll die young, you'll live your rest of your life in pain, and all that kind of bullshit. Ah, I he see. Should, he should go out of a bit of glory. If he wins this match, he should retire. But but if he Straight. wins this match, he gets a title shot at the pay-per-view. Why would he retire? And Ratchet Cause 5... a bit of controversy. Ratchet 5 finding it humorous to eliminate Big Daddy VGR. Now these two going after each other. A co contest for the ages as Ratchet 5 squares off against against Spyro Jam 86. And a punch in the face. That was a closed-fisted punch, too. Those are illegal, by the way, Fraser. You can't punch a man with a closed fist. Well, he's uh, legal or not, it's better than anything uh, Pete the Player is willing to do. Yeah, well, Pete the Player have won his match earlier tonight. You, you haven't won a match since you lost your title. <laughs> I lost my title because of things we've already established. And now, now look at this. Is he gonna eliminate Ratchet Five? Ratchet Five. No, he's not. Ratchet Five's teetering, gonna... teetering on the edge, and a drop kick, and Ratchet oh. Five is out. We have our new number one contender. Whole lot of bullshit. It is Spyro Jam 86 looking. Spyro Jam 86, if you're listening to this, retire tonight. Spyro Jam 86 is now going on to the bash for a championship match against Owen. You're too old for this and you're not going to win against Owen. And Owen's a crackpot. Owen's a crackpot. Yeah, and no, none of them are going to win. And in breaking, in breaking news, in breaking news, next week, you, we've got a we've got a tag team match lined up. I'm just getting getting word over the wire. The next week it's going to be Owen and Pete the Player versus Crystal Fisher and City Ruler One. What a match that's going to be! God, that's a hard one. I don't want Pete the Player to win, but neither do I want City Ruler. City Ruler One on the same team as Crystal Fisher. That's going to be an interesting matchup next week. But right now it is our main event. It's for the World Tag Team Championships. We have the team of 100% Chaos, Mr. 100% Gamer, and Chaos Star, the current reigning tag team champions, going up against uh, a couple of your favorites, Johnny Natrium and Al Malloy. Well, I can tell you one thing, that if there's anything that's 100% guaranteed, it's 100% Chaos are going to lose this match to Johnny and Al. Well, well, I mean, that's that's an interesting statement. I, I would consider these two the favorites going into it. I mean, these guys have been a tag team for quite quite a while now. If you, if you remember, actually, Fraser, the, these two were rivals to start off with. Two, two big men, the titans of CWF, clashing over who was the, the best. Uh, but they've seemed to join forces and now are seemingly unstoppable as a tag team. Well, I disagree. You disagree? Why do you disagree? Tell me why you disagree. Because, first of all, the name was really stupid, Mr. 100%, 100% Chaos, 100% my ass. Get on here, that's a stupid name, they need to change their name. Third, secondly, they need to show their faces, they aren't Muslims. <laughs> they like pretend they are. Well, well, look, just, there's, a, there's an aura, a mystique around these two men. No one really knows what, what No one knows thinking. what 100% they are, but, you know, they call themselves 100% tag team, but you don't even know 100% what they look like. Well, that that may be true, but but I was going to suggest that maybe the uh, the other team of Johnny Nitro and Al Malloy uh, have have the edge because they've already beaten these men. They beat them last week on CWF exactly. Sunday Superstars to set up this match. They beat them in the middle of that ring. Um, and what makes them think they're going to win again? Well, well, Fraser, Fraser, if you remember last week, there were some very dubious circumstances under that win. Remember, the referee was distracted, and uh, jo Johnny Nitro actually hit. Uh, Mr. 100% Gamer with those title belts while the referee had his back turned to, to win that match when we know that would have been a disqualification elsewise. So, so in saying that, do you think these guys can win in their own right? Because the tag team titles can only change hands on a pinfall or a submission. Disqualifications don't count. They can win, they can win. They'd like that that disqualification shouldn't have even count. All that mattered is that he inflicted some pain and doing exactly what he was meant to as a wrestler. Win. Well well I mean last week last week that disqualification it didn't count. The referee had its back turned. Uh, will will these guys be as lucky tonight? I don't know. Uh, 
Anyway, Al making his way to the ring. Here he comes, Johnny Natrium. Uh, we're speaking of the Intercontinental Championship earlier. Johnny Natrium, of course, the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion, with a total of 280 days carrying the title. Johnny's pretty good at what he does. I gotta say, I love this Johnny guy. Well, well, Johnny Natrium, former tag team champion. I mean, sorry, former uh, world champion, former Intercontinental champion. If he wins this match tonight, him and Al Malloy will become the only men in CWF history to hold all three title belts. What a what an accomplishment that would be. And that's exactly why they're going to win tonight because they know what's good for them. They know what's good for their career. They're not going to give up. They aren't going to mess about. They're going to do this for themselves. Well, I mean, I mean that is like some serious like that. That would make these two the most decorated men in the co history of this company if they were to to win this match tonight. Uh, are, are we ready to see this? Like, do you think that this is the time and this is the place for these two men to to win this match to become champions? Yes, it is. They're gonna win. They're gonna show those 100% bastards who the 100% winners of this thing is. Okay, well, well, that still remains to be seen. And Johnny Nature taking his time with his signature entrance here, just just posing, posing to the audience, posing to the CWF universe. He's just, you know, basking in the glow that he would say is his shining star. Uh, and and we're gonna have one hell of a tag team match, I'm sure. Like this is for the titles. It doesn't get any bigger than this. And on CWF Sunday Superstars, no less. There he goes for the World Tag Team Championship, and the referee now presenting the belts to both teams. Uh, get settled in, folks. This is going to be a hell of a match, wouldn't you say, Fraser? I do think so. This is going to be the match of the century because these 100% people aren't even going to be in the ring for 100% of the match. Well, well, no, that's right. It's a tag team match. And look at that! Look at that big back body drop there for Almoy, and things are getting set to a to a rocketing pace, rocketing pace. Oh, uh, Al Malloy dodges the headbutt and gets caught with the Irish whip thrown into the ropes and clobbers him with a forearm. Clobbers Chaos Star with a forearm, and Chaos Star, oh, dodges the headbutt. But a lovely arm drag there. How, how, how do you start the match, Fraser? You've been in many tag team matches. Tell me what the, the mindset is going into the very start of the match. How, how do you work things out? You look at your opponent, you look at their size, and you think, how am I going to take this big bastard down? And being a small wrestler, you do have to keep a very strong, keen eye out for the size, because the size is what matters at the end of the day. You've got to figure out, is this a fast opponent or a slow opponent? You've got to figure out what their moves are, what they're good at, and you've got to you got to make sure you can uh, stay up as long as possible well, well, against... Well, yeah, Alan Malloy making a lot of mistakes here at the start. He's gone for a couple of high-risk maneuvers that haven't paid off for him. As you saw before, he tried the springboard, but, but got caught in the back there and really paid the price for it. And uh, and I must say, like, do you think it, it, it's wise to go in all guns blazing, or should you really size up your opponents first? you got to size up your opponent. You, you can't just go in straight for the big moves right away. You've got to figure out how big... you got to let this person... It's like uh, it's like dancing. You dance around with them. You play around with them in the ring. And you wait and see what they're, they're going to do, what moves they're going to try on you, how, what their methods are, how they're going to take you down. And when, when you think you, you understand it, that's when you go in. Because once you know their moves, you know the moves you can use against them to take them down. Well, we've got a pin here. We've got a pin one. And no, no, broken up by Mr. 100% Gamer. Johnny's a smart wrestler. Johnny's smart. Al, look at him. He's not doing so good. He, he if, if Al was smart enough, he would have prevented 100% game from jumping in and preventing him from losing. Johnny would have won if Al was actually in the ring paying attention, but he didn't. He didn't, no, and, and look at that. Trying to go for a drop kick there. Misses and catches him with a chop. And look at that. That's a, that's a nice heel kick there, but it's not going to do too much because these guys, these Mr. Uh, sorry, Johnny and Al need to hit the high impact moves to take these guys down because kicks and and punches, uh, you're not going to win a, a slugfest with these men, are you? No, you aren't. And I think uh, I got, you know, I'm on Johnny's side here, but he got to stop uh, posing around. He's spending way too much time dancing around the wing, and he's letting his guard down, and he's letting this guy get up. He shouldn't let this guy. And get now up. look at that, letting a fresh man come in, the fresh Mr. 100% gamer now against Johnny Natrium, who's been in the, in the ring for a couple of minutes now. And uh, and we're going to see how this is going to play, how this matchup's going to work. Oh, look at that heel kick. But, but, he poses. You've got this, Johnny. Don't pose. Go get him down. You just pose and waste the time, Johnny. Johnny, I support you. Okay, he's going to let out. 
I was at a small wrestler, but he'll do this. Well, he, he's got this. Al is a former two-time uh, world heavyweight champion and also a uh, couple-time intercontinental champion as well. But Al, the problem with Al is lately, lately he hasn't been focused. When he was had the fans on his side, he was a focused man. But but since turning his back on the fans, because he believes that Crystal Fisher should not be the champion, he believes that Crystal Fisher is undeserving of championship gold. And uh, and has really really made an uh, you know an impact by by saying so and really turning his back on the fans. Um, you know he hasn't seen the success that he used to see if he had the CWF universe behind him. And now he's teamed up with Johnny Natrium. And these two men clearly have no respect for their opponents, as you see with the posing going on. And and look at that look at that Al Malloy lack of wing, ring aware, awareness there. And now paying the price. He's got caught. Oh, no no no. And Al, a knee. This is... Al and Johnny are, you know, I love them for this, but when they're in the ring, they need to learn to stop keeping their heads so far up their ass and taunting the opponents. They gotta go straight into it. And there he goes, stepping, just stepping, pulling all his weight over over Al Malloy. Al Malloy must, you know, he weighs probably what, 198 pounds, 199 pounds, something like just under 200 pounds, and and I would say the the big the big guys probably 300, 400 pounds each. And that kind of weight on your sternum, just, just look. Al's clutching it. Al's clutching himself. He's really, he's feeling the the effects of this match now, and he's taking the fresh Johnny Natrium back in. Yeah, I got he needs to recover from this. If anyone's been out of City Ruler, they'd know the feeling. Well, I mean, City Ruler won. He, he actually defeated uh, Al Malloy for the Intercontinental Championship uh, a couple of years ago. And posing, oh, yeah. posing again. Is he not going to learn Johnny Natrium now? Creating some separation. What's he thinking? Goes for the heel kick, misses, gets caught. What's this? No, no, no. Counters into a side Russian leg sweep there. But but quickly back to his feet as the big man. You have to wear these men down. The longer this match goes on, I would say it favors the big guys because they they aren't feeling as much punishment because it's harder. It's much much harder to to make these guys feel it. And look at this. Look at this. Going for a high, a high razor's edge like power bomb maneuver there, and now going into the cover. Could this be all she wrote? This is usually a finishing maneuver. We've got one, we've got two, and no. and look at that. Did you see? Did you see who didn't come to Johnny's aid there? Ugh. Johnny. Ah, doing this. And Al, Whoa. <laughs> Al just getting knocked to the outside. Johnny Natrium. Well, well, well. 100% game is back. His turn. Going to the top rope, and go. Oh, look at that. And just knocked down these the lack of ring awareness these two people have i am sorry i am on their side but i cannot look at the, the like it's almost like they don't have two eyes it's like they're blind or well something. and johnny just went for the referee and now he's, he's bringing the steel steps in are we gonna see a repeat of last week but the referees come back too if johnny nature uses the steps johnny nature will get disqualified but look at that just he, I think I think Johnny Natrium was going for Chaos Star there with the heel kick because Chaos Star just raked his eyes and Johnny Natrium was a bit dazed. But he's knocked the referee down. The referee's down. Johnny's clutching straws right now. He's doing what he can to win. He knows that the big guys aren't going look, down anytime soon. He's got the belt again. He's got the belt again. He's got the belt again. But the referee's up. That's oh, that's a disqualification. That oh. Now Johnny just did that because he knew what he had to do. It was either that or lose. Well, this was a repeat of last week. He thought, but but not going to to come to his aid this time and here's a replay and you can see the referee saw saw all of that Johnny Natrium disqualifying himself we're going to find out the ramifications of this next week folks stay Johnny tuned Johnny did what he had to Johnny did what he had to 